I have authority. Please tell yourself, I have authority. Some of these things we think that people are too much, a bit too much when they do some of these things, but they're important. It's important to tell yourself in a situation, I have authority out loud. Out loud. Sometimes you know, I don't know your lives, maybe your lives are rosy. Yeah? Maybe your lives never have any issues, but they there's me have reached a time where I have to talk to myself out loud. I have authority. Like God is in this situation. I'm going to be fine. I hope that we can start being serious about our lives. Go to the toilet when your boss is shouting at you. Yeah? And say I have authority. Yes, I have authority. I have authority. I have the peace of God. Whatever you need to declare over yourself. Say it under your breath if you can't go away. Yes, I can do all things. You're going for an interview and you know that you always fail. Why? Because you're always shaking. You always forget all the answers. You fail your exams because you get anxious and forget all your all the all the answers. Speak to yourself out loud in the exam room when you start feeling that thing coming, kyodo, like pastor calls it. Say I have the peace of God. Yeah? I have the mind of Christ. Yes, say it out loud. I have I want you to say it again. I have authority. I have authority. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. We can start with that one. Um I have an IV here. Yes. But they they are the same. I have given you authority to trample on a, on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all how much all. all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. I have I've had people, you know this is not talking about we, when we in Bible school we learn about how to apply scripture. It's not talking about now we go looking for snakes. Yeah? And then you give it your hand. Yeah, let let's see. You 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 kick it. You see if it's going to That's not what we mean. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the enemy and the enemy is the devil and anything that he can throw at you, seen or unseen. That we have been given authority to trample. What is to trample? To step on and not just to step on like nicely. If I step I'm not trampling on this stage. Okay? I'm not trampling. That's not trampling. Trampling is to destroy. Trampling is to that there is no life in it anymore after you're done with it. Okay? Some of us we are walking gently on it. We are being divas on on snakes and scorpions. A male divas also. Yeah? But he has given us authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy i loved how pastor was explaining this in the morning um that there is power there's a difference between power and authority we have confused the two i loved the example i'll give it again because it is amazing of a woman uh, who is a police a police woman she might be like me makeup red lipstick yeah in fact in your house there are police women who have lipstick i loved that I saw one who I don't know if you, anyone has been in your house lately. She's a Muslim. She's covered her hair then she has red lipstick. I loved it. I was like, "Wow. This they are they are embracing femininity." Yeah. So she might be like that. Yeah? She might even be small bodied. But as long as she has the authority that she has been given by the government of Kenya as a police woman, you are going to listen to her. Doesn't matter if you have the power from the gym. You have muscles, yeah? You are a boss in your company, you are the CEO. But you come you on the road you are misbehaving or you're not even misbehaving but she stops you in her uniform with the authority that she's been given by the government of Kenya, the police force. You are going to stop. It does not matter. You're going to be there. Have you seen? I've seen them on the side of the road, men, big men begging the small woman, Madam Tafadhali. <laughs> <laughs> they are nearly going on the floor madam and that you should see them in their houses that's not how they respect their their wives in their home they are simba marara yeah they are the ones who they cough and everyone comes to but this time because it is this woman who has authority all authority given they have to listen that is the difference between power you can be powerful you can you, you know you can you can look a certain way you can speak a certain way you can be respected by other people like the people who respect the devil yes and his demons they all bow but when he comes here we have all authority 
we don't bow here. He's the one who bows. Let me tell you how he he can he can make you bow if you don't know the word. And knowing the word is not like today you are listening to me. No, you can say that you know but that's not knowing. Hebrew has the Hebrew and Greek have a way to differentiate. I feel like English is a less of a language because it's not as extensive as the the the, the, the language that was used originally for the Bible. But the Bible you see when it has even the difference between I, I doubt English really explains properly the difference between authority and power but thank god we have yeah it's limited we have hebrew and greek and all that understanding to understand and by the way that's why we mention it's not to sound deep <laughs> we don't say in greek it's not to it is because there is a way that in english or in translation some things are are missed out so if you want to really understand you can just have some more understanding of the original language okay the devil does not have authority all authority was given to Jesus and then Jesus gave a, gave it to us. There is someone there who I've been interacting with all sorts of Christians. So there are Christians who say that that scripture was written to the disciples and not to us. That's how there are people who read scripture like that. Educate yourself. Educate yourself so that when you're reaching out, you don't you're not caught off guard. Know your stuff, yeah? I had someone yesterday complimenting a preacher and she, and she said and she's an unbeliever. She said I like to listen to this and this preacher because they know their stuff. It's good to know your stuff. Don't be ignorant. Don't just know the little that pastor preaches here and that's it. No, yeah. So there are people who apply scripture like that. They don't believe that like this Bible that you can take it as if it's you like it was written to a certain people which i agree but don't agree because like how then are we supposed to apply the word like we can say that all the, then there's nothing for us because even the ones that were written to the church were written to specific churches so there's nothing that we just read and get excited like a story book and then that's it like that's why i don't agree because i have seen i have applied the word of god it has made tremendous change in my life it works so i i I, I I don't know about those people. Yeah, but we are disciples. Jesus prayed. He prayed that's how I would come back uh, to such a person if we are discussing in a peaceful way about that. I would tell them that Jesus prayed for these disciples who he had and even those that were to come. We are not going to go there but it's in John when he was praying for the disciples, he prayed not only for these disciples that he was with there John and Matthew, but he prayed for those who were to come. Meaning we are all disciples as long as you are born again you become a disciple of Jesus, okay? So this that was given authority that was given to them then was also given to us. You can believe that. Praise the Lord. Yes, yeah, so we have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and I've told you trample is to completely destroy. Yes, snakes and scorpions, all powers of the evil one. All the power of the evil one. Praise the Lord. The enemy may have power, but he has no authority. And I've given you the example of the man who is built or is a CEO in his company. Yes, but under the authority when of the police woman, he cannot say anything. He cannot bring out his badge for work. It does not apply here. <laughs> this authority of this police woman is higher than any other thing. And that's what the devil is doing. Some of you he's showing you his his uh, his card for hell his card at for work and you you bow at that one you don't know that you have higher authority there's nothing that he can tell you i have a um okay let me tell you the story after um james chapter 4 verse 7 is the next verse we are reading nkjv therefore submit to god resist the devil and he will flee from you let's start with the first step of submitting how do you submit to god you submit to god you put yourself under his authority you put yourself under his righteousness because in this kingdom righteousness is important righteousness is the way that you are able to stand before god you remember the story about uh, and even to stand before the devil like to stand against the devil the story about the the pastor who was fasting and he ate a banana do you remember i can quickly tell the people who are new um he we were they were fasting not we that church they were fasting and the preacher that day was really like it was things were hard so he ate a banana then in the afternoon service he was casting out a demon and the demon told him now you what are you telling me and you just ate a banana he said that to embarrass him and to to test whether he knows who he is some of us that's what the devil does tricks and we're going to see that 
just like testing you a bit to see whether you know who you are and what the word says about you. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus became sin. We exchanged places. We were the sinners, filthy for that matter. Irredeemable, like we we were lost, going to hell forever to burn with the devil. And then Jesus came and died and took he took our place and we took his place as a son. That's why we are sons. It was an exchange. It's clo- it's called the beautiful exchange, the glorious exchange. So if you're born again, if there's a day you accepted Jesus as your savior, it does not matter whether you have been to the gym. Yeah? It does not matter whether you prayed this morning. It does not matter. And that's what is the too good to be true news. That's why some people who think grace is too much, it is because they cannot comprehend that. How can someone not pray for a week and then they can come and have the audacity to cast out a demon? How can someone eat a banana when they are fasting? We are not condoning eating the banana. We are not condoning not praying. We are here all about koinonia, yeah? We are following up. But we want to tell you that don't put your faith in your praying every day. That means it's still dependent on you. Don't put the your salvation and the the security of your salvation in what you do. That is works. They are filthy rags to God. The reason he is so against sin, one of the major reasons and I have told you here before, it is because of the condemnation that comes with it. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. God was not so What can I say? He was not so disappointed in them because they sinned just for the sake of it. He was disappointed because he knew that now by the time these people are able to be my friends again, be confident again of my love, be able to walk in the authority that I gave them, it's going to take long. And that's what happens. Maybe like you have been free from let's say what? fornication. You have been free, you have been walking well, then one day you fall into temptation. It is going to unless you really have understood by revelation the grace of God and the love of God for you it is it's going to take you from God from fellowship that is why it grieves God when we sin because of what it does to us and to the fellowship that we have and the understanding that we have of how he loves us praise the lord are we together that was for someone i don't know how you have failed this week but God loves you that has not affected how he loves you You need to understand and even this understanding of his love for you even it's the one that helps you to overcome even that sin to become free. It is like this kingdom of God is not like um the kingdom of the world. In the world, Holy Spirit help me. It's like the more you're qualified, like even in school, that's how we are taught. The more you're number one, you the more you study, you understand? But here in salvation, it is the more you surrender to God to the work that God did for you. That's how you you are succeeding. Are you are you are you are you understanding? Yeah, that is not how much you're doing. It is how much he did and you're understanding and embracing and resting in that. The finished work of the cross. Imagine entering a race where the race was already run. It is such a funny It was already won that you're winning you're walking from the winning position I wish we could understand like that's the that's the mystery of the cross and of salvation that we are we are fighting the good fight of faith not fighting the devil like we're going to see not fighting you every time you wake up you you are binding your like your <laughs> it's like the devil is the one who keeps you busy no but you're fighting the fight of faith you're fighting to believe that it was already done that you're already a winner you're starting the race as a winner it's amazing praise the lord are we together so submit to god submit accept believe that you're righteous that he has given you all the authority that the word of god the word that he says whatever he says in his word is true over your life that is submitting It is do you know it is humility to have faith it is pride to not have faith because you're still trying to sort yourself you're still relying on your prowess your goodness your holiness your good works your good record of koinonia that's what you're relying on submit to god 
Are we together? Step one. Are we together from step one so that we can move? Now, when you are relying on the authority, you have believed that all authority has been given to you. Then you resist the devil. You cannot resist the devil without authority. You have to believe that you have this authority and then now you resist him. I'm trying to, to look for an example of resisting. Pastor gave you a story, gave a story in the morning about how there's a day last week. He woke up and the devil was uh, trying, trying him. He had uh, three accidents with the car the same day. Not fatal, but still. First of all, accidents cost money. One of the accidents was that he hit a side mirror for a lady in traffic. And do you know how much that cost us? Like 15,000 to replace a side mirror? Do you see how the devil <laughs> is a bad devil? There is nothing good about the devil. Okay, so um, he, he had three accidents. And you remember he called me and said, let's pray. Let's speak against this. This is definitely the devil. Wanting to spoil my day, take our money, spoil our cars. Yeah? Yes, so we knew that we have authority. That's not even something we discuss. In our daily lives, we know that we have authority. So we just came against him. Devil, get your dirty hands off our cars. In the name of Jesus. And that third one was the last time and it has not happened again and it's not going to happen again. That's how you can take authority. That's, why, that's how sometimes um, if you have a child, the baby is just crying for no reason. You have to be conscious of such things. You take authority. Devil, get your hands off my child right now in Jesus' name. And many times the child stops. The child sleeps. If there's sickness upon sickness. Pastor gave a story this morning also about he, there's a time when he was younger, he got a boil on his knee. And he went to the hospital and it got healed. Then another one appeared just below it. Then that one would get healed and another one would appear just below it. And he said something that I found fascinating, that his mom was wise spiritually. <laughs> I don't know if anyone caught that. That his mom was wise spiritually. And she knew that this is not just a boil. Devil, I see you. Huh? I see you. Get your dirty hands off my child's knee. And that was the last time the thing happened. Some of us, we have taken things. Now we can go to the next, to the next part. Wait first. Um, resist the devil and you will flee. You will definitely flee. That's how it happens. Yeah? You know the authority that you have. That's how you're submitted to God. You resist the devil intentionally, actively refuse he, whatever he's trying to do and you will flee. That's what the word says and that's how it happens. There are two extremes of people when we are talking about this. People who see the devil in everything. Have you ever met those ones? They are just a bit much, yeah? When they buy a t-shirt from a uh, second hand, they go and pour oil on it and speak in tongues for 30 minutes. Anything that will... Uh -huh. Everything. They see the devil in everything. And the result of this, how you can tell if you are in that extreme, you're always walking in fear. You can't throw away your panties in the dustbin. Your old ones. I've come for you. You're the one I've come for. Why? Why can't you throw your, pan your old panty in the, in the dustbin? Because someone may take it and cast a spell on you. After you shave in the, the, uh, in the barber shop, you tell them to sweep and give you. I've come for you. You're the one I've come for. And you say you're born again, you have not understood the word of God. I love the audacity of pastor. And that's why I, I'm not leaving Ratsi. You might think that I stay here because I'm the wife, but it's because I have seen a boldness that we need to have as children of God, if we really believe. He went to an area in Kawede, in Ukambani, where witchcraft is big. Um, so he went and he, they were afraid of witchcraft. Like which, those places where witchcraft is strong, the people there are afraid of witchcraft. Like it's not just a story. They are afraid of it and they believe that it's true and they have seen the effects, okay? So when you come and speak against it, that's actually a good way to get them because they're like, there's something higher than this thing that we see here. And that's why some of us cannot be effective in missions in such places because we don't carry the power of God. Stories don't work there. That's why in Nigeria, I've looked at uh, Israel and I've remembered. In Nigeria, that's why they walk, they walk in the power of God. The power of God is important because witchcraft is also serious. Pastor Bakita, our pastor in Nigeria, hi Pastor Bakita, she tells me how those things are real. Like there, people, it's, you have to be strong whichever side you decide because the witchcraft there is serious. 
So if you are in God, you are seriously in God. And you want a church that has the power of God because you have seen. And if you are in a witchcraft, you are also really strong because the power of God is also really strong. Uh, yeah, there is no middle ground. Middle ground is here in Kenya because we... Um, yeah, so he says, he went there and he told them, go give my number. This is my phone number. To the, the strongest witch in this that you know. Yeah, the most powerful one. The most powerful witch that you know. This is my number. Write it down and go give it to them. Let them bewitch me. I know some of you are quiet, not because it's a powerful word, but because you are scared. You're like, wow, that was not very wise. <laughs> you still have not understood the authority that we have. You've not understood the God we serve. Because you know another thing, you might think, we, you might, maybe you've believed we have all the authority, but from who? You, all the authority you have is still a God who can, who, you, you get, we've not understood who God is. That he has no comparison. That no one can, can compete with him. He's not in Do you know that the devil is not the opposite of God? The devil was created. He's a creature. God has no match. We need, maybe that's what we should do, Koinonia, for the rest of the year. To understand who God is. The kind of God who called us. According to his purpose. So that when he says he's given us all the authority, then we can stand in a certain way. The way we are standing, all the authority we have is from the chief. Or, you understand, like it's not the all-powerful God who has no much. That's the authority that he has given us. Yeah, so he told them that and nothing happened to him. They were so scared. They were like, oh, you're serious. You're even saying it out loud. We, the, you're not going to leave. Something's going to happen to you. He says that when he went there, he even told them, because they told him, the pastors, and it's the pastors, they're advising him. Now here, the, the, the witchcraft is so strong. So let's wake up at 4 a.m. We pray so that the meetings can be successful. Pastor is like, don't wake me up. Okay? You guys, you can go and pray at 4. Me, I'll be sleeping. Okay? And when I come to that meeting, the devils will know that I have come. Why? I'm not coming in my own power. I'm not coming in my own strength. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Be strong in the Lord. Some of us don't, like we, I'm not coming in the strength of Ndanu. In how much I have studied. In how much I have fasted. Some of us, that's why we are failing. It is because that is not strong enough. Yeah? I am coming in the strength of the Lord. I'm coming in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We can go into that one. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord comes, we are coming. The perfect example that a pastor has given us many times is, you've seen like our building, uh, I was in Pangani Girls High School. And one of the buildings uh, was dedicated by uh, someone, I don't remember who, in place, no, 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 it says it was dedicated by Moy, the president, Honorable Moy, but stories say that he was not the one who was there that day. But on the plaque, yeah, on the plaque, on the whatever that's written there, it says that it is Moy who, who dedicated the building. And that is how it is with us. That we are going in the stead of. There's someone who came in the stead of, but they didn't write uh, Saitoti. They didn't write that this building was dedicated by Saitoti in the place of the president. There was no need for that. The fact that the president sent Saitoti, the, he sent him. It means that him, he was there. And that's how it is taken. The president today has come. He has given us the, the pleasure, the honor of dedicating our building, despite him not being there. His authority is enough. The fact that he sent someone, it does not matter. Some of us, that's how we are, we are not coming like that. In our life, we come, we announce, like those ones, the sons of Skiva. Yeah, they come in the name of the, Je the Jesus of Paul. Or the, the devil is going to beat you up properly. Because the Jesus of Paul means you don't have the authority you don't know who you are. You're coming in your own strength. Ah, that one, he can beat you up properly. But if you come in the name of Jesus, the all-powerful Jesus, who was given all authority and gave it to us to trample over all powers of darkness, then we win. Then we win. In fact, he, pastor likes to make fun. Some of us, it is because of how we, when the devil, when maybe, for example, you're casting out a demon, when it starts making a fuss, yeah? Uh, calling, drawing attention, screaming and throwing tantrums, literally, then now you, you, it's like you doubt. You say, that I'm trying to think, I'm so, I, I was telling someone this week, I'm so covered in my bubble of Rati and the word that I even struggle to relate. 
Yeah, so what do people do out there? I no longer even watch those videos anymore. Or people who cast out demons for two hours. How is that going to help me in what now we are believing in? Where the word says that you move from darkness to light. Where the, the examples of Jesus casting out a demon was just one minute, one second, it was done. This one for two hours, we don't see it in scripture. But it's the one that we see most on TV. You, that's what you're watching the whole week. You think that because it is a Christian television, just that it is a Christian television, it is helping you. It is not helping you. If it is showing you that the devil has energy and strength and power to make you cast him out for two hours. A whole service when you're supposed to be doing other things, making money or preaching the gospel, you are casting out a demon for two hours. And you come out of there without any clothes, they are torn, you have marks of how they've scratched you, and you expect those people to listen to the word of God and to believe that the word, they will keep going to the witchcraft. They will keep going to, because we have not exemplified the authority that we have been given. Yeah? We have a lot of authority and it should affect how we deal with the devil and situations. And I had told you that there are two extremes of people. There are those people who see the devil in everything. Then there are the others. Yeah? This is the new age. And all those people, this, this is another very common category. They act as if the devil does not exist. Have you seen those ones? They, uh, no, let me tell you another. They are intellectuals. Intellectuals, yeah? You talk about the devil, you look very shady. You look like you're, where are you from? What are you talking about? Yeah, that was just the weather. During, during June and July, the weather is cold, so you have the flu. And that's normal. Just take the flu shot. Yeah, when kids are growing teeth, duh, they have to diarrhea. So, just let it pass. It's normal, it's science. And if you want to fit into that world, you just believe that the devil does not exist. Yes, they give intellectual nice names. They baptize demons with nice names. Intellectuals, yes. If you're in the corporate world, you know. If you deal with people who are not Kenyans, foreigners, you know. I worked in an office with French people. You talk about the devil, they're like, what are you talking about? You're behind your African things. You're superstitious. Thank you. I was looking for that word. That's superstition. That's another extreme where you think that the devil does not exist and he loves it because he hides in that. He hides in that. I love the examples that pastor gave. You keep losing a job. You lose it the first time we can say. We, can, we cannot. Now this is the sober stand that we are taking. Yeah, That it is true. Not everything is caused by the devil. Okay. Some of us, we have health issues because we eat chips every day. Or we drink soda. I had a friend who used to drink a liter of Sprite every single day. Yes, a liter. Of, I'm not exaggerating. Sometimes two liters. Yes, an intellectual. She used to carry them to the fridge in the office and keep drinking throughout the day and looked very, yeah. So some of us, the things we are suffering are because of our wrong decisions. For example, that one I've given you. You have high blood pressure or you're overweight because you eat too much and unhealthy. So we can't say that is the devil, okay? But the devil is, he came to steal only. In fact, that's what scripture says. You can put for me John 10, 10 for you to see. But he came only. You know, I love scripture and I look at those words. That he came only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So all evil, he has somehow, is, he is in it. He might not start it, but he, you can start it for him. Then now him, he takes it, Yeah? Yeah, he can, he can um, for example, you lose the first job. Let's say in 2005. Uh, some of you are so young. 2005, you are like five years. But uh, let's say in this uh, 2010, you lost uh, a job. Yeah? And it was just, there was retrenchment. Yeah? Very logical. Yeah. There was retrenchment and you happen to be among the people who are retrenched. But from that time, you've never been able to keep a job. Now, surely, we would, even if we're intellectuals, yeah, we're speaking on our noses that English, but you, surely there must be, you must see the connection. That is not normal. From 2010, now we're in 2024. Yeah, that is not normal. I'm here to speak to you and to shake that table so that you stand up and understand and submit yourself. This is why we are preaching this gospel. You submit yourself to the authority of God and then you resist the devil. 
Yes. It is not normal to be jobless for three years. I'm here to declare. Okay? It is not normal. It is not normal to lose your money. I have prayed for such... There are people here. You, we come to lay hands on you for different things and God tells me you have been losing money and you can't explain it. It is not normal. It is not normal for clothes to disappear from your wardrobe and you don't know where they are. There are people like that. There's this top. You know that you put it there. And things just keep disappearing from your house. And you don't know. That it is not normal. And it's not superstition. You can take authority. You, you forget money. It started. You forgot money to take your change from the, from the supermarket, let's say, or the matatu. Then the house girl steals money from you the next day. Then your salary, they send it with less money. Or you discover that secretly other people's salary were added, yours was not. Then, are you seeing? All this are, you, you need to be, you need to be awake and to realize that that is not normal. It is the devil who is hiding in intellectualism and in a name and you need to resist him in the name of Jesus because you have authority. It is not normal. It is not normal to always have a bad day. That just bad things keep happening to you. Then the scripture is not working in your life. Especially if you are a believer. Praise the Lord. Yes. Not all things are demonic, but the devil is our enemy. And that's a very important thing that I learned in my work, in learning to walk in love. That you need to understand that this person that you're looking at, who looks like they are fighting you, is not your enemy. Your mother-in-law, wives, I don't know where you are. If you have a difficult mother-in-law, she's not your enemy. It is the devil trying to frustrate you and frustrate your marriage and test your, your faith. The devil is your enemy and he's a bad devil. The devil is a bad devil. I've said this and I'll say it again. Some of the, one of the main reasons I stay away from sin is because I know sin is of the devil and the devil is not, he has no good plan for me. That I might not see it now, but whatever that thing is, is to my destruction. Because that is the devil's thing and that's the devil's camp I am meddling in. And the devil is a bad devil. If you understand that one, it is also as powerful as that God is a good God. Do you know? That the devil is a bad devil and understanding it and staying away from the bad devil is, a, is as powerful as God is a good God. Yes, because some of us, we know God is good, but we also think that the devil has some goodness. My former pastor used to say, the devil does not fight fair. You think that this, because it's a newborn child, he won't attack them with sickness, even him surely. Who, who does that? The devil does that. He, in fact, he preys on the weak. He's not fair. He's not logical. That's why, do you know that some of the people who have, like every time we minister to them, they have demons in street kids? Do you know that? Because the devil is preying on the weak. That's what he does. He preys on anyone he can. He's not playing fair. He's not playing fair. So if you've been dancing with him a little in a few things, putting your finger in the honey, like they say, yeah, like the proverbial, you, you get away from him because of that. He plans to destroy you and destroy you good. He's, the devil is a bad devil. Yes, and he's not going to have mercy on you because he knows you had a, a, a bad day. Just understand, surely I had a bad day. Or you know I didn't sleep the whole night. Or you know my family, we are poor. Surely just leave my finances alone. That's not how you deal with the devil. You tell him, get your dirty hands off my money. Yes, and he does. He flees. Negligence, bad diet, bad decisions cause bad things to happen. However, the devil is still behind all evil. I've just actually di di discovered that the devil and evil, the only difference is a D. I've never seen that. Yeah, that he's the, he's the root of all evil. <laughs> like he, he is an evil devil and he does not have good plans for you. All his plans, I dare say, and I say it out loud, all the plans the devil have for you, has for you are bad and they are for destruction, to steal from you and to destroy you. Praise the Lord. Yes. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. We go into something interesting. Let me show you where the, where the power of the devil is. We, let's not talk as if he has a lot of power. You know, you might be there wondering, so he has some power. Then you, you cling on to that one more than the authorities that I'm telling you that he has. Let me show you 
that we have, sorry, the authority that we have. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 to 13. Or 10 to 12. NKJV please. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. One of my favorite verses. And in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I want us to look at the word wiles there. That you may be able to put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Satan's only power is in his wiles. What are wiles? Don't, I won't leave you behind if you don't know what wiles are. Wiles are tricks. Tricks, when I hear the word tricks, the first, the first thing that comes to my mind is like magic. Those magic shows that we used to watch when we were young. I don't know why. The only person who uses tricks, they use tricks because they don't have the real deal. Uh, a quick example is like these people who con people on the street. They use lies and tricks. They tell you something, something. Like even the ones who call and tell you to, they've sent you money. Those are tricks. How, how do those people succeed in tricking someone if the person does not know? They, 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 English is uh, disappearing. But they, they take advantage of your lack of no, knowledge. That's what, that's what, and that's what the devil does. Because you don't know, or you are blindsided in a way, or you doubt the word of God in an area, or you just don't know, then he can come in and trick you. I'm trying to, to look for a trick. Uh, another, another, as we continue, another example of, of something that comes to my mind when I hear tricks is the hair. When you were young, the story is about the hair. The hair was small, is small. The hairs are small, and in the stories they're always small. And they are disadvantaged. They are weak. So the only way they get by, the only way to survive in the jungle with the big animals and the others that have other strengths is their wit, is their tricks. So the devil comes to you and tricks you. You, you are the lion. You are called after the lion of Judah. You have all authority, but you don't know. He comes and tricks you. All he has is tricks. He lies to you. Like he did to Adam and Eve. Did God really say? Put some doubt. He knows that doubt is, is all he needs. And he can take you out from there. Small, small tricks. He just tricks you. You were healed, for example. You came to the healing line. You had uh, ulcers. And you were healed. And you went and ate pineapples. And everything that you couldn't eat. And you were excited. And then a week from that. Or a month. Or even a year. Tricks. You start feeling the same symptoms you used to feel. Then you, you fall for the trick. You call your friend. Instead of going to the word and speaking life and resisting the devil. Imagine the answers in Rudy. What? The answers is back. Imagine after all that. Then you, you're sad. Then you're crying. Then you're, you're not resisting the devil. He came with a trick. He came to test. Pastor has told us this story about how he was allergic to meat. Very bad allergy that would give him swellings and all that. And he was healed. And a year or something from that day, he ate meat and got the allergy. And he went and bought more meat and came and ate. And continued eating. He didn't declare that the thing is back. He didn't declare that he's sick again. He didn't stop eating again from that day and say, now this is just my fate. This is now, this is just who I am. He resisted the devil in action, in word. One way to resist the devil is how we speak. Another way to resist the devil is how we think. Another way to resist the devil is meditating on the word. Another way to resist the devil is to do what you, what he does not want you to do. Like to keep doing it. You understand? Like for example, the meat. Go eat meat again. If you have the faith. Don't go and say, my pastor told me to go eat meat and you don't have faith and the devil is beating you left, right and center. If you are willing to fight the good fight of faith, I've had people who, even in their finances, in January, I saw someone fighting the fight of faith. They gave all their salary, 90,000, as fast fruit and trusted God that he's going to sustain me. 
The devil, do you, do you think that he had money every day the whole month? The devil brought tricks. Maybe that's the day you get a flu and you need to go and buy medicine. Just, you see now, if you are not given that money, why did you give your money? Now what is that? How is that wisdom? <laughs> Ama, you should have just given half. Or what is that now? Your, your pastor is lying to you. See now. Then you take that trick and you run with it. Tricks. That's all he has. He has no authority. All authority. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All authority was given. When something, let's say, all the offering that was collected, we decide we are giving it to one of you, to Chasi. We are blessing her today with all the offering. It means that they, that there is someone who does not have the offering. Like all of it has been given to Chasi. So why do we, we, we behave as if the devil has some authority? Yet the scripture says that all authority was given to Jesus. All. And Jesus now gave us here all authority. So the devil, all, the only power he has is tricks. And the power that we give him, because of the tricks we can also give him power. The devil can use the authority that you give him because you, you're not using the authority you have. So he can come and play around with your life. Have a field day. Sports day. On Friday was sports day at our daughter's school. You're, the devil can have sports day in your home because you, you have allowed him. You've opened the door. He's there. He's playing, uh, yes, this side football, this side volleyball, this side tennis because you're not taking authority. You have decided to be an intellectual where everything has a, an explanation that is not the devil. And he can play tricks on you. I'm trying to, to remember a trick that he has ever played on me. Oh, hiya. <laughs> that's amazing. How the Holy Spirit can just answer me immediately. I, out of nowhere, started to fear small spaces or closed spaces. And it became so real to me. Out of nowhere, uh, it's not a, a phobia that I, I was born with or something like that. And we are not born with phobias. We should refuse them. Resist the devil, yeah? But yes, like I started to fear to be in closed spaces. For example, it started with in a matatu. Matatus, for those who are watching from uh, away, <laughs> is our public transport. So when I enter a bus from Siokimao and the, the windows are all closed, I would start to sweat and not be able to breathe. I would start to think how I need to get out of this. So the first thought would be, tell my neighbor to open the window. Sometimes Kenyans, they don't like to open windows. I don't know why. Oh, it's raining. Oh, it's cold. I'm like, I'm starting to, and it's so, so real. I'm telling you how it can start as a trick. And those of you who have issues like your healing from mind things, you know that it's very real. Like, I start not being able to breathe. Now the worst was when it was in an aeroplane. An aeroplane, there's no windows. An aeroplane, you can't al alight. You know, you guys are laughing, but it was so scary. So I would have to speak to myself the whole journey. And the longest flights I've taken recently are like Uganda, um, Kisumu. They're short flights, but it's the longest flight ever if the trick has become a reality to you. You've meditated on the trick until it is a reality to you. I could not breathe. So I would even want, like, okay, I've never come off of the matatu, but at least most of the time someone would open the window or something. Now the aeroplane, there was no plan B. I had to trust in God. I had to speak the word to myself. So I used to start, like, weeks before. When you book a flight, I'm not happy. You know, some of you, a flight is a testimony. The devil took away the testimony from me. A flight is a testimony. Saves you time. It's just, it's a good thing. But I would be, the time I just click, we have paid. It is booked. They, they've sent, the, now like we, we are going, I would start to be afraid. Because the trick, the devil lied to me that in a closed space, I cannot breathe. And I took it because I would think about it. I would, it became a reality. So I would be so scared, but the word helped. The word helped and logic. I would tell myself, we are more than 100 in this flight. How are these other people breathing? These flights have been running like you have, this is how you resist. I'm telling you, I feel like maybe some of you, your lives are nice. Maybe you've not had to resist things. But you imagine that mentality. Do you know how many times I would think, like, because I'm there, it's a war. 
I'm resisting the devil and also the devil is resisting me. Like it's a, it's a war. He doesn't go away just the first time you tell him something and he goes, that's, that's, that's how we behave. You think that he'll go away just, ah, uh, you go away, then he goes away. <laughs> no, he's, a, he's like a roaring lion looking for who he will devour. He is persistent. He is consistent. Do you know the devil is one of the most consistent creatures on earth? Very consistent. He's there just waiting. Don't worry. I know where I can catch them. That's why we have to be also consistent. The devil is consistent. So I remember, I want to, like, I don't know, like I'm fighting. So I'm, I'm telling myself, all these people, how are they breathing? Aeroplanes have been existing for how many years? No one has ever suffocated in an aeroplane. I know it sounds funny to you guys. Maybe it will help you one day when you are there resisting the devil. Okay, when you have to speak to yourself logic and the word. I spoke to myself both logic and the word. So the word was, yeah, like, this is just the devil. I can do all things. I can fight this. I am able to do this. This is a lie. I walk in the truth of God. I walk in the light of God. I'm not fearful. Fear is of the devil. Anything that comes with fear is of the devil. I'm talking to myself in my mind. I'm not even telling the, some, the person seated next to me. Some of us, the way to, to conquer that we need to learn from today is to stop releasing things from our lips. Talking. The first thing that you do when something bad happens is to call your best friend. And you know that that best friend of yours is not going to help you to speak faith or life or healing. You need to stop. You call on the name of the Lord. I could not tell even my husband. And he told you that once when he had symptoms of COVID. He was, it was a trick. I believe that it was a trick. I believe that if we had spoken it out, he would have had that COVID. But he refused to speak. He told me what he's feeling, but we did not declare with our mouths like this. Maybe it's COVID. No. And I have learned it as a wife. Wives, we also have a problem. We talk too much. That is something we need to learn. Women, you need to learn because in, in the multitude of words is sin and is lack of faith. Unless all that a lot you're talking is faith, then cut on talking. So I remember he told me I'm, I'm not testing. And it's in the season of COVID. Of course, everyone, that's the current symptom of the, of the current, I don't know what they are called, of COVID that's going. It's come with people not being able to test. And he tells me, guy, imagine I'm not testing. I'm like, I'll just keep quiet. Oh, <laughs> that story ends there. We talk about something else. My nose, I can't, um, like things, like you just tell me things that were directly, but I refused to talk. And we continued speaking faith. He would come here and preach and record those live recordings that we had. Go and watch them over COVID. You'd see they are seated here. Him sometimes with Ellie. Many times it was with Ellie. And he's seated here. He was, many times he was, he was one of those times it was that season when he was not feeling well. But we refuse to utter death. We refuse to utter the devil, what the devil wants us to utter. We refused that trick. And, it's, and he fled. We resisted him. Sometimes you resist with silence. And he never got sick. And COVID came and went. And in our house, we were okay the whole time. And we would host people. Hotspots used to happen in our house. Maybe that's where he even had caught the, the trickery from. You get, there was, the, there was a way to explain that you see now why we should not host people, see now. But we did not. And we did not get sick. Some of us, we need to shut up. If you are not speaking life, if you have nothing good to say, and by good, I mean if you don't have the word. Yet, I remember Andrew Womack. There's a time their son died. You know me, I don't have a problem with people's testimonies. I don't have a problem with crazy stories that people have about what they've seen in God. Some of us, that's, that's our problem. We get offended. So I love these stories because they show me what is possible in God. No one has died yet around me. But one day I will encounter someone that I need to resurrect. So instead of being offended or thinking that this person is extreme, I'm like, wow, even in this day and age, someone can resurrect. So Andrew Womack, they are called, him and his wife, and they are told that your son has died. He's in the morgue already in ice. Come and, like, come, come and we see what to do. It's the, one of the sons that calls them. And the, what do they decide to do? He tells his wife what he has been told, and from that point onwards, on the drive, it was like, let's say an hour's drive. I don't remember exactly, but it was a long drive. They, they're not talking. They're just playing scriptures or a sermon or something. And not talking about what has happened. If you don't have 
a talk of faith, a declaration of faith over your situation yet. Don't talk. Just keep quiet. So they keep quiet and they go. And when they arrive, they are taken to where the body is. Can you imagine? It's not like the body is still on the bed warm. They've already put it and it's been an hour. If by the time you are called and you drive, maybe you take time to dress up even if it's just slippers because some these times call for desperate measures. Yeah? All that time, the person is now even cold. But they go and say, open. Show me where he is. Open. And I don't know what he said. Like I can't remember the exact, I don't want to lie. But the truth is that the, he's called Joshua. He got up. And he's alive until today. Such a story is offensive to some. I don't understand why. For me it is a possibility. It is an, uh, an eye-opening scenario that God is still resurrecting people in this time. This is flesh and blood. I have seen Andrew Womack face to face, very close proximity. When he came to Kenya, we sat right behind him. He is flesh and blood, I can tell you for sure. He has no wing somewhere in his shirt. He is like you and me. He's just a believer who has decided to know his authority. And that is one of the things, by the way, that he really preaches about. And let me tell you, go and see. Anyone who's walking in signs and wonders, they, if they are preachers, they preach about the authority they have in Jesus. They believe in the cross and what was paid at the cross. They are not uh, telling people stories. They believe in the word of God. And is that a, a coincidence? No, it is scripture. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It is just scripture at play. I'm telling you, Andrew Womack is not special. He's just decided to believe the word of God. Danuka Sancha is not special. I tell people to stop congratulating me for the testimonies I give on social media. Because I, I stopped, I stopped, I realized that people remove themselves from the scenario and make you look like you have the gift of healing. I understand that there's a gift of healing, but today we are talking about the authority that every believer has. Every believer. If you have accepted Jesus and if you have not, we are going to give the opportunity to do it. And from today, it didn't say every mature believer has been given authority. It says all believers. Yeah, like we have all been given authority. There's no way where it's been. That's what we add for ourselves. That is Pastor Benjamin who has authority. Where is Pastor Benjamin at your workplace when something happens there? Where is Pastor Benjamin at home at midnight when we are sleeping and our phones are on silent? You have to believe that you have authority. As long as you have accepted Jesus, you have authority. Just submit to it, accept it, believe it, and walk in it from today in the name of Jesus. And you will see these things. You will be able to trample over scorpions and, and, uh, and snakes. Not literally, but anything that the devil throws at you, you're going to be able to trample because you have authority. Praise the Lord. Yes, yeah, so I'm not special. I'm not special and I refuse that narrative. And that is a, a problem I have with uh, preachers of the gospel who put the limelight on themselves. They don't teach people these things. So the people are always relying on them. If the man of God is not there, you know my child, and that's what used to happen. It just hit me now. Like when Lazarus died, they had not yet received the, the authority. Jesus had not yet been given all the authority. So he died because Mary and Martha and all the people who are there, despite them being friends of Jesus, despite them being um, believing that Jesus was the Savior, in the, whatever they knew at that time, was the Son of God, let's say that, because he had not yet died to save them, yeah? They still had to, all the authority was still in one place. Like it was just Jesus who was able to resurrect someone. That's why someone can die, some things can go wrong in your home just because pastor is far. Then you have not understood. You have authority. You have authority. You have authority. Things should not go wrong if a child of God is in the house. People at your workplace should be coming to you for solutions. Yeah. Because you have authority. Things will not go bad when I am in the house. I believe I carry solutions. Some of you even come to me for things that don't even concern the Bible. Just to ask me. Because I have told you many times I believe I have 
solutions. And is, am I special? No. All of us, we have authority. We have all heaven backing us up. We have the voice of God. We can hear God. We have the word of God. We have the name of Jesus. Everything is for us. Who can be against us? If God is for us and he is, who can be against us? You have authority. Yes, you can say it. I have authority. Many of the battles we are facing are demonic. And it is for us to stand up in the authority that we have, resist the devil, and he will flee. It is a given. He might not flee the first time because it's a trick. But you keep resisting and he will flee. Praise the Lord. I hope I have stirred faith in us and an understanding that we have authority. And not some authority, not a little authority, not in some situations. All authority. Imagine living your life. Let me paint a picture now before we pray. A picture of the believer that God desires for you to be. And this is even in my small understanding. Because I believe that we keep understanding more and more. Yeah? A believer, you now, think of yourself now, walking without any fear. Scripture even says, I'm telling you, this is how my mind works. Especially when I'm preaching. Like I say something, then I feel like the Holy Spirit keeps throwing things at me. So now I've, I've remembered uh, Proverbs 31, that the woman, the woman there has no fear of the future. It is not because she's beautiful or whatever. Like for us here, you can be walking without any fear. First of all, because it is scripture that fear is not of God, that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind, yeah? Yeah, so you're walking in authority. You, you have no fear. You have no, you don't forget things because you have a beautiful mind. You have the mind of Christ. You're always speaking life to your mind. You never fall sick because Jesus, by his stripes, you are healed. I have heard of people, many people, I, I, the, the one that comes to mind immediately is um, Kenneth Copeland, um, uh, what is the other name, the dad of all the people of faith. He was saying that the last time he had a, a headache was in 1935. Some of you get offended by that. I get challenged. Why, why do I cough once in a while? Why do I have a headache once in a while? Why do I have food poisoning? Scripture says that the, they will not, nothing will harm you. You will, what is that one? You will eat poison. The scripture is talking about poison. What you're eating is even food. So imagine you're never sick. You never have food poisoning. You never have a headache. You're never forgetting. You are excellent at work. You're walking in the strength of the Lord. You're not complaining. You are, you have a positive attitude. Yeah, you're always a blessing. You're blessed to be a blessing. You never lack. You have money when you need it, at the time you need it. You have money even to give to others. Yeah? You're always, people are looking for you for solutions because you hear God like Daniel. You think the story of Daniel was just a story to excite you and to be recorded in history that they would call him to interpret dreams that they knew that Daniel had the solution for the whole country. You can have a solution. Now we have someone in a state house. We should have more of us that when they want something, they know where to call because I will go. And that's what Daniel told them. Give me this night. I will go and pray and I will come back. And he didn't say, I might. I will see if God tells me. There is something that these people in the Old Testament knew and they, Jesus had not even died yet that we need to know. He knew that I will go and ask God and he, I will come with a solution. And he did exactly that. And there was threats, not only on his life, but the life of all the other people who used to advise the king. The king had said, I'm going to kill them. Have you ever thought of that story, by the way? That he was going to kill all the, and that was also Kina, the Daniel and the friends, because they were advisors, they were working under the king. So he said, if someone does not interpret, tell me my dream and interpret it. They are going to die. And Joseph goes, and Joseph, Daniel, all those people, the ones who interpreted dreams, they did it. No one had told them what the dream was. And they were flesh and blood. I'm trying to tell you they are not special. In fact, us, we are even more special. We have Jesus living in our hearts. The scripture about the, the, the whole of faith, the whole of faith, Hebrews chapter 11, it says that those, like they have not seen what we have seen. Like all of us now will see it in the end. But we have seen more. Peter, 
has so great things but we are able to see even greater as revelation go- continues to grow generation after generation we should be having more testimonies bigger things carrying solutions never stuck i tell people i i get very troubled if i don't if i am i'm troubled by a situation for a long time because i believe i carry solutions i believe that god lives in me and god knows all things why am i not getting this one a quick one i remember is when um ada was small our first born i used to feed her with the bottle sometimes and this one day she refused the bottle and she cried and refused it and i was a new mom and i didn't know anything so in my just and sometimes god does not even speak to me when i go to i'm alone with him like when you have a small baby sometimes it's hard to just be alone with him in a corner you get like some we need to stop being religious like, allow god to speak to you anytime That way you always open you always carrying your notebook you always interacting with the holy spirit all day every day that works for me so I, was, i don't remember what i was doing but god told me or i felt maybe when i say god told me it feels like it's special to me i just had a realization that it is the hole of that bottle that was now too small for the baby like where they circle from no one had told me i had never heard of such a thing i didn't know that there were different bottles for different ages and what is different with the bottle is that hole that allows milk out because when they are small it's a small hole then they it grows bigger so i just went and pierced myself i didn't even tell my husband i pierced a hole for it to be bigger and then i gave the baby and the baby took then i went to the group of moms and asked do bottles for children have ages i'm sure i look like a fool now i feel like a fool because now i know And they told me yes. It just go even look at the packaging. It's usually written 0 to something months, six months. Imagine the Holy Spirit taught me something about bottles. Do you understand? Why are we stuck then? Why are we stuck? And Romark tells a, a story about this um they were playing some game and he doesn't know games. He's very like him he just it's the word only he doesn't know this many things they were playing a game charades or something i can't remember and whatever answer for the game was i wonder why he was playing such a game because now the answer is weird but anyway the the game was the answer was playboy and he has never he doesn't know what playboy is he had never you understand but like the holy spirit told him the answer for the game and it was playboy and he tells it of course it's yeah like you get don't dwell on that but yeah like For me it's showing me that God speaks to us. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. You're not just an earthen vessel. You're not just we have refused the 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 narrative that says we are just human. I'm only human. But anyway, I'm only human. That's why you're misbehaving. Being moody. Not finishing your assignment on time. not giving receipts at work and eating the change but i'm only human we are not only human human like pastor says is just a third of who you are your spirit soul and body yeah why don't you choose for your spirit to be the one leading to be in charge instead of your body the only human praise the lord we were talking about the believer they have no fear they always have solutions they don't fall sick they are not worried or anxious they have a sound mind at all times because he's given us a sound mind is it just a story and i saying a rhyme to finish the sentence of that verse in titus no he's given you a sound a sound mind yes you can do all things through christ who strengthens you can't should not be a word that's very common in your vocabulary so this believer they are always challenging themselves to do more to do better because they believe that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them i've said they always have a good attitude they are full of the word good news yeah they are healing the sick they are walking in miracle signs and wonders because they believe the word of god praise the word lord that can be you from today because you have authority i hope i have challenge do enough yes those who are looking at me with a sad face you can have joy the joy of the lord you can be joyful let me tell you my last testimony as we close one thing and this is what i say and this is how i'm also going to call anyone who's not accepted jesus 
we are told many things about what God does when he comes when Jesus comes into our lives and why salvation is important among them being going to heaven what but one testimony i have and i gave it recently on social media is that i used to have childhood depression by that i mean like i was depressed as a child when i didn't even know what that was i used to cry myself to sleep that's the devil whether you like it or not because how can you explain that a child who has not gone through anything i've never i was not abused i came from a healthy home my dad my mom both of them were there present actively even until now they were godly i was born in a pastor's home I used to cry myself to sleep at a, like I was very young I was not even an adolescent maybe you, you can say it <laughs> it is hormones <laughs> No but I used to cry myself to to sleep I used to feel unwanted and no one has not shown me love I just the devil darkness I used to feel darkness But Jesus came into my heart at 9 years of age and that changed I am telling you I have peace in my heart that I cannot explain. I'm at peace. I have peace in my heart. I have joy all the time. I I don't wake up feeling sad. Maybe you know you can be sad that when someone has died. That one is the normal sadness that you you can have. But that sadness that is ingrained in you that you're always sad, you wonder why people are laughing or you laugh just to, because we laugh in this church but it's not in, it's not coming from the inside. Me when I laugh it is coming from the inside. Not because I'm any special, but because Jesus lives in me. I have understood that he's the prince of peace. And that can be you today. If you're already born again and you're not enjoying that it is because you have not submitted yourself to God. And I've explained that and I'll explain it again. You've not accepted, you've not taken time to understand and receive this peace of God that is in you already. And if you're not born again, it can be you. You can decide from today that I will accept Jesus to come and live in me, to re- to displace. You remember displacement method where how to tell the volume of a substance, you or even a human being, you jump into the pool and the water that comes out and it is measured, that is your volume. Yes, so that is that can be you where Jesus can come in and replace all the anxiety, all the lack of hope He's Christ in us, the hope of glory, the hope of more than this world, the hope of more than what the world offers and what is seen. He can come and give you peace and joy. And this peace comes from being reconciled back to God, where we are no longer enemies with God, we are friends of God, that we belong to him, we are called according to his purpose. We are his children. I've told you many of us are walking like children but not children of God. You can start to walk as a child of God. So if you're here and you've never received Jesus, this is a reality, not a story. And I want you to come. Please raise your hand and come and I'll pray for you. It is it is a one one second process, one minute process. You move from darkness to his marvelous light. He calls it marvelous because it is it is not common. It is not he says it does not give peace like the world gives meaning the world can give you some sort of peace yeah you can when you when you know like now many of us have been paid salary praise the lord so you have some peace because you know that you have your rent in the account yeah you can have some sort of peace and i'm giving an example when you have a salary you have a job you have some settle some settlement in your heart knowing that at least i have food i have that's not what i'm talking about because when the job goes that peace also goes That's what scripture says in John that he, uh, he does not give us peace like the world gives. He can give you a peace that surpasses all human understanding. That when you're supposed like the way Jesus was sleeping in the storm, when you're supposed to be worried according to the world standards, you're not worried. When you're supposed to be sick according to the world standards, you're not sick. When you're supposed to be at your worst because of what is happening around you, you are at your best because you have Jesus in your heart. Peace is not situations it is a person Jesus the prince of peace where when he's living in you no matter what is happening around you you are at rest because you have Jesus so the first category of people is if you want to get born again and enjoy this peace and joy that comes from God and only God I don't care what the world has told you it is only God who can give you this kind of peace please raise your hand and I'll pray for you before I come for the rest I'm coming for you <laughs> Anyone please don't go back with your restlessness, your anxiety, your fear of tomorrow. 
when Jesus is here ready to receive you even anyone online if you want to give your life to Jesus now or if you watch this later God is not bound by time you can just um uh, kneel down wherever you are whenever you'll see this and you ask Jesus to come and be lord of your life and you'll that's it and you go and attend come to Nairobi cinema I wanted to say go to a bible believing church come here or go to Nairobi cinema and say that I got born again and we'll give you our book that will help you to walk in this faith life <laughs> praise the lord anyone else before we pray for him this child of god the son of god Isn't it amazing that Jesus is the son of God and when we get born again we become sons of God? Yeah? He died so that we there will be many sons of God. We'll be like him. Anyone else? I don't want to lock anyone out. This is such an important moment in his life and in your life also it can be. Where you move from darkness to light. Where you move from being powerless and having no authority to having all authority. Now you can face the devil. Now you're not the same with him. You're not at par. One last chance. You can help me see if I'm not seeing. Okay, we're going to pray with you. What is your name? Christopher. Christopher. Yes, today after this prayer, you're going to be a child of God. Um you'll say this Christopher, you'll say this after me. Yes. I'm at fanya na Kiswahili. Where are my people for Kiswahili? So that he he knows what he's saying in a more personal way. Yes. We we are not going to interpret just lead him to accept Jesus. Yeah, he was telling me that he used to come to Ratsi and he didn't have a job and God gave him a job. It's now been 3 months. Yes, and he's grateful. Let's lead him to Christ then we will finish. Uh, wake up call wako kwa kwa phone. Sema Bwana Yesu. Asante. Kwa kuli kwa kunifia. Asante. Kwa kunyosha dhambi zangu. Kuanzia leo nakubali neno lako. Nakubali sauti yako. Nifanyike mwana wako. Kuanzia sasa nimeokoka. Kuanzia sasa mimi si wa shetani. Mimi ni wa Yesu. Mimi ni mwana wa Mungu. Mimi ni kohuru. Mimi niko na uzima. Kwa jina la Yesu nimeokoka. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, yes, you will you will see you will see her. Huh? Yes, and she'll give you our book and talk to you. Okay. Yes, I want us to stand up as we finish. I've, I've not if you've understood that now from now on you're going to be seeing demons in everything that you're doing you've not understood please go and watch again if you have understood that there is no devil in anything you just go live your life you have authority now that's that's not what we were saying and you've not understood but if you've understood that we have authority and that the devil is a bad devil and he's behind all bad things we might start them but he can take advantage of us if you've understood that he has tricks and we should be enlightened by the word of god so that we are walking in the light and in freedom yes then you have understood that you have authority that jesus died yes and rose again and defeated hell there's something that the holy spirit has just told me here when we were praying for christopher that another way of looking at this authority is authority over sin There are some people who are struggling and you're feeling hopeless. The fact that you're a believer, scripture says that he gave us power over sin. That you can say no to ungodliness. The grace of God that has appeared to all men teaching us to say no to ungodliness. So you can overcome sin. Praise the Lord and you're still born again. Let not that trick of the devil of telling you now see Now and you went to church and then you sat at the front. Hi. And that you are doing koinonia and reporting. Who are you who are you kidding? Those are tricks of the devil. You are still born again and God loves you and he has given you a solution. Yes. 
and I will pray I'll pray for for those people when I'm praying. I don't want to embarrass you. Um but yes, uh, fornication, masturbation, pornography, um alcohol here and there, for smoking, all those things that you're struggling with, God is able to He has given you authority over them already. He's able to help you to catch to understand that so that you overcome it. Yes, to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Yes, and anyone else um if you feel like you've you've been um living a substandard Christian life after the stories that I've told you after the encouragement that I've given you after the scriptures that I've read for you I want you to take a minute and pray. Take a minute and pray and tell God I'm willing to start afresh today. I want to walk in this authority that you've given me. I want to be more intentional. I want to be a light in this dark world by being by walking in the authority that you've given me. All of us should be praying. I don't think anyone has reached um the highest level. Lord that you'd help us, that you'd help me to be even more bold, my king, to walk in the fullness of life. Wow. That we will walk in the fullness of life. The fullness of life. Jesus came that would have life and life in abundance. Walking in authority gives us the ability to walk in this life. Abundant life, Father, that would walk in abundant life. That I would walk in abundant life in my health, in my marriage, in my parenting. Lord, in my my serving you as your servant, Lord. As a daughter, as a friend, Lord, that I would walk in authority that you've given me. That I'll be a light at all times, Jesus. La rubra kanda la se tusa. Le shetu krada ze de shala ze. That I will overcome evil with good. That I'll always speak life. Raba shetu krada ze diha. That I'll believe your word. Rakada basetu shetu la krada ze di. La crude jada seta rako. That I can do all things. I'll walk in the strength that you give me. Raju da la krada ze da. Reko shetela rikana. That I'll be consistent in my living for you. In my seeking you. La shetu krada ze du seta. Ma shetu krada ze. That I will not grow weary in doing good. Ramaje du kaze tiza. Kraza du za da shata. Reko di baza ta se tija da. That I will not fear. That I will walk in boldness and authority. La shatu and in a sound mind and in love and in power. Zedika shata. Le prezu la ba shata. Reko di ba. My life is a life of miracles. Sa shata. Zeku za da. Sa. Follow me, Majetu Sakata. Zede Krodu Sata Preshata. Lika Zatu Sata. Le Sata. Thank you, Father, for everyone under the sound of my voice, here and online, now and even in the future, people who will watch this. Thank you that you have given us this understanding and you continue to give us this, that we will know this by experience, that we are we have authority that all authority was given to you Jesus and Jesus you gave us authority to trample over snakes and scorpions and all powers of the enemy that the devil is under our feet that we'll walk in fullness of life from today in the name of Jesus fullness of health fullness of uh, boldness to live out this our salvation out there That fear is not our portion in the name of Jesus. Defeat is not our portion in Jesus name. Anxiety is not our portion in Jesus name. We are full of hope because we carry you Jesus the hope of glory. Thank you. That from today and even as we go through this series with pastor that we will see signs and wonders victorious living start to be our our normal life in Jesus name testimonies of overcoming things that we've battled with for long things that we've allowed for the longest time because we understand from today that we carry authority that testimonies will be in abundance in the name of Jesus and by the authority that you've given to me i cast every sickness in the name of Jesus any sickness troubling your children under the sound of my voice i it i 
rebuke it. I dry it up in the name of Jesus. Someone has been having a cough. A cough that comes from your chest. That makes funny like a, a noise that has been scaring you. I cast that cough in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I speak life in your lungs, in your chest. In the name of Jesus. It ceases from now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Life in that chest. In the name of Jesus. I see that it is also in your family. Something like that. Refuse it. Refuse to excuse it. Because your mom had it or your brother. I speak life over that chest in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. In any other situation that has been troubling your children, I speak life. Jobs and better jobs. Raises and bonuses. Someone who's frustrated at the same level in your workplace over and over again. I speak breakthrough in the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, another one I want to take authority over is every passport that is in Nyayo House. For anyone under the sound of my voice and our families and our friends that has been delaying this week, we release them in the name of Jesus. Someone should not sleep until those things are released. For these people under the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus, to the glory of God, to the glory of God, we are not powerless. We are not powerless. We are not powerless. We have the power of God, all authority. Thank you, Father. That person, or if there are more than one who is struggling with sin, Father, I speak your encouragement over them right now. I speak that your word that I have spoken will take life, will take root in their hearts right now in the name of Jesus. That they will go and they will go in faith. That they, you have given them the power to say no to ungodliness. That they will stand in that power. That they will rise in your grace. That they will take hold of your grace and your mercy. And that they will rise over that situation in the name of Jesus. Let them testify. Let them be amazed. I no longer desire to look at porn. It disgusts me. I no longer want to drink. It disgusts me. It makes my stomach hurt. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. From today. Victory over sin. In the name of Jesus. Victory over immorality. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be testimonies about that. Not one, not two. Many. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm just listening. If there's anything else. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that your word will bear fruit. Thank you that our tongues from today will speak your word, will speak life. Yes, not death, not discouragement. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who's depressed, anyone who's struggling with thoughts of um, hopelessness, I speak life over them. Devil, get your dirty hands from the minds of God's people in the name of Jesus. Freedom in the name of Jesus. It is freedom that he came. It is for freedom that he saved us. Freedom in the name of Jesus. I see like like him removing his fingers like they were tightly holding something and now they are letting go. That is someone's mind in the name of Jesus. Freedom. Let them, this thing that I try to explain, let them experience it and testify. That I got to ex experience this peace that pastor keeps talking about. This joy from my heart, bubbling with joy in the name of Jesus. Praise. He says that he will replace, he will give us uh, praise in, in the place of depression and sadness and hopelessness. In the name of Jesus. Joy in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, and any other situation that, is, uh, that has death hovering over it, I speak life because Jesus rose from the dead. Life in the name of Jesus. Life in marriages that were collapsing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Life in businesses that were dying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Thank you for feeding us well. Thank you that we'll have a wonderful week full of blessings, full of testimonies. Thank you that you'll show yourself strong to everyone here who is willing to believe. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you that our children are blessed. They are well. 
walking in in good health in the name of Jesus. When other children are falling sick in the whole class, ours are walking in in good health because we have authority in the name of Jesus. We are exempt. Yes, of what the devil is offering this week. We are only receiving what God is has in store for us. Thank you, Father. We love you. We want to stand out for you. We want to declare Jesus in this country. We want to be an example of what a life in you looks like. Lord, thank you that we'll have a wonderful week. We are blessed. We are walking in abundance and authority in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our pastor who went to Sparks. Thank you that he's blessed. Thank you that you strengthen him. Thank you that you give him wisdom to walk in this authority and this um, responsibility that you've given him to lead this amazing movement. Lord bless him, encourage him, send help us his way. Send encouragement his way. In the name of Jesus, a fresh anointing. Tomorrow let's see and let's see him at another level. Let's see him and wonder who is this man because you are working in him, you are strengthening him. Yes, you're giving him strength to do the exploits that you've called him to do even as we follow him. In Jesus name. Thank you for our country. Thank you for how the shilling is doing better. Just like we prayed. Thank you that things are getting better and better in our land because we are here in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our people in Nigeria. Thank you for our people in Canada. Thank you for our people in Botswana. Thank you that they are blessed. My king, I speak life over their situations in the name of Jesus. They stand out even in that foreign land. Why? Because they have you. Yes, thank you Father. Thank you Father. Thank you Father. Thank you Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for our land that we are believing for. We call it forth to become a reality to in the flesh in the name of Jesus. Let's make progress this week to finding that land. Give us favor. Give us every shilling that we need, my king, for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you Father. Thank you Father. Thank you for um for Ruth and the complete healing from cancer in the name of Jesus. Thank you that she moves from strength to strength this week, strength to strength. Thank you that every week she's stronger and better. Ah, and the devil is ashamed in the name of Jesus. We trample over that devil of cancer in the name of Jesus and we speak life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Just a few more seconds. The presence of God. Anything that the Holy Spirit shows you in your life that you need to speak life, just speak life speak life anything you need to change thank you father thank you father we love you we belong to you thank 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 you i talked about the the pain the period pains any lady under the sound of my voice still experiencing such death i speak life over that area of their lives in the name of jesus from now on your periods are pain free they are in controlled amounts in the name of Jesus your life does not come to a standstill because of something that's supposed to be natural in the name of Jesus i curse it in the name of Jesus i speak normalcy not the more normal of science the normal of Jesus the normal of the gospel the normal of the word in the name of Jesus thank you father everyone who is pregnant they will carry full term in the name of Jesus no miscarriages in this house in the name of Jesus yes we carry fruit full term in the name of Jesus thank you father we love you we belong to you and we encourage this afternoon yes thank you for your peace i think i'm unable to finish because god is still ministering peace to people receive the peace of god decide to rest decide to rest today thank you holy spirit the peace of god thank you father we love you we belong to you lord we have hope in you thank you father Is someone still you feel like your situation is is immovable is still impossible but i speak life lord even to the most impossible looking situation in the name of jesus father may they testify in the name of jesus 
someone on my on my left this row here you feel like your situation is just so impossible you have no idea how i speak life over it in the name of jesus the god of the impossible is our god someone sang and said he does not know how to fail <laughs> show yourself strong in that situation father as they put their trust in you for the glory of your name thank you lord I think I think that's it in Jesus name we pray amen let's celebrate Jesus